Hey guys, it's Christina Ritchie. If you want more pars, but you're missing your shots right for a right-handed player, let's take a look at your wrists. All right, your wrists control the club face. All right, so it's really important that your wrists aren't overly cupping at any point in the swing, all right, because that opens the face. So what does that mean exactly? At the top of your swing, for example, if you have a lot of cup in this lead wrist, that club face is pointing to the ground, and that is a wide open club face. All right, so your club face is most likely going to be open unless you have a lot of forearm rotation or on the downswing you add a lot of flexion, which would be this action. All right, and most often players that have a lot of cup stay cupped and maybe even increase it on the downswing. All right, so this club face open creates too much work at impact. Conversely, if you're a player that has a lot of flexion, and I see this a ton with newer players, right, they get to the top and they have this action, right, because they're oftentimes not holding the club correctly, most likely in the palms, so they need to support the weight of the club, so they do it by doing this. Right, so oftentimes the, the grip is in the palms and you can't support the weight of the club. So instead, we gotta get this, this beefy part here on top of the shaft, that is so important. It has to be on top of the shaft so you can support the weight of this club. Because this club is heavy. If it's in the palms, you're not going to be able to support it. So then when you get to the top, you got to support it somehow. So players do this. They over flex the lead hand. All right, And this creates all sorts of problems on the downswing. The other issue is players are just not really clear on how to hinge the club. All right, so how do we hinge the club? The lead hand. You're going to go back to lead arm parallel. We have a little vertical hinge with the lead arm. All right, we got to make sure that you can actually do it too. So let's back up and do some TPI assessments and make sure you have mobility in your wrists to do what we need to do in the golf swing because there's various ways the wrists work in the golf swing. So what you're going to do is join me now. All right, so we're going to start with this one. Go ahead and extend your arm straight out. And all you're going to do is flex and extend. Flex and extend. It's a really good warm up too. So you're going to feel this in your forearms because the forearms are the door opener for the wrists. Much like the shins, the muscle in our shin is responsible for our foot flexion and extension. All right, so we want at least this much, we want this angle with the wrists, all right, that much. If you can't only do this, you don't have a, a lot of uh, wrist mobility with the extension. If you can only do this much with the extension, flip that around. Ideally, you want that much extension, but if you can only do this, you're limited in your extension. All right, so flip it around again. If you can only do that, you're limited. If you can do that, you're great. Flip it around. If you can go full to get the full angle of the six iron, you're awesome. If you can only go here, you're limited. All right, so it's really important to understand what your wrist can do. Now, the trail hand is really responsible for the extension. All right, the trail arm in the back swing. Go to the top of your swing. All right, that's where we have what I call horizontal hinge, all right, where you're holding the pizza tray. All right, so that's why we need that. And then on the lead side, let's test that on our TPI assessment. So for this assessment, you're going to go ahead and place your elbows at your sides, arms straight ahead, do thumbs up, and then just drop them right down. And all you're going to do is go up and down. All right, it's not how much, it's just whether or not you can go up and down. All right, what I see players do is they kind of do this action. All right, so that tells me you have a hard time vertically hinging. All right, and the vertical hinge is really important, especially with the lead arm. So let me show you that. All right, so as we take the club back with just our lead arm, go ahead and choke down a little bit. All right, we want some vertical hinge here. All right, that's how the lead arm works. Vertical hinge. And then we add our trail. We add a little forearm rotation here at the top, and we have a horizontal hinge. And then we're going to keep our horizontal hinge on the downswing and add some flexion with the lead wrist. 
All right, so that's why our wrists are so important. They control the face and they give us a ton of power. All right, so let's check our pronation and supination with our forearms. So again, elbows by your side. And all we're gonna do is flip the pancake. All right, so you're just gonna rotate your forearms. All right, so when do we do this in the golf swing? Kind of just gave you a hint a couple seconds ago. All right, we do this in the back swing and the down swing. All right, in the back swing, as we get to the top, we have a little forearm rotation. All right, and then on the down swing, we have some forearm rotation through the ball. All right, if you have a hard time supinating and pronating, you may be one that hangs on. All right, if you have a hard time pronating and supinating, you might have a flying elbow here at the top. All right, so it's really important to understand your wrists and forearms, are they mobile? Can they support you in the golf swing? All right, so these three assessments with your wrists are really important to do. And this is a fantastic warm up too.